So this is a very basic tutorial on how we use the Cosmos CG client uh, during our productions. Um, most of the times we use a front end, but some of the times we use the client that can be downloaded from cosmoscg.com. Um, most important is to install a couple of things you can find on the website. Go to downloads and install these three things. The fourth is only needed if you are planning to use NDI in your production, uh, but the other three are required with uh, our setup at this time. So I have one folder with Casper CG. I have two different servers. I have the VT server and I have the uh, overlay server, uh, mainly because the VT server fixes some of the audio issues. Uh, and the overlay server is compatible with the templates that I've made. There will be a link in the description where you can download these versions. So first up, let's start with VT. And we go to the server and we have the config file that we open in Notepad. This is the uh, config file of the server. Um, and what we want to change is where it finds its media and where it finds its templates. So I have a media folder on my desktop and I just copy paste the location and paste the location in the media path. And the same I do for the templates. Even uh, we're not using this server for the template. And the video mode is in this package already set to the right one. It's 1080p 5994. And the consumer is gonna be a screen output. So it's gonna be a window. If you wanna have other settings, that will be a different tutorial. Uh, so first of all, we're just going to start the server. Um, this is the screen, allow access. So this the screen is a bit too big, so you can just put it in the corner for testing purposes. And we're going to minimize the server application. So next up, we're going to open the client. That is what we're going to use to actually uh, control everything that's happening on the server. You can run the client everywhere within the same network as long as you configure the IP right. So let's configure a server because it needs to know where we can find the Casper CG server. I put in test server and I put in the local IP address because uh, I'm only testing it locally on my machine. Everything else is set uh, for the servers I have in the package. Now you can see that it's going to update the library. So let's start with something simple by just playing out a video. Uh, this is one of the videos that's in the media server, or a media folder. Uh, and you just drag it into the rundown uh, window. So you can see it has a channel, it has a layer, and if you have multiple uh, servers, you can select the server there where you want to play it, if, of course, it has access to it. Uh, the target is the video itself, uh, and the layer is uh, on what layer it plays. And the layer is basically the same as in anything, any editing program, you can put layers on top, but we'll come back to that later. So if you want to play it out, you just select it and press F2. And as you can see, it plays out. I've muted the sound because YouTube will uh, recognize the audio track uh, but as you can see it also counts down what how long the video will be played so if you're on the intercom you can tell the director how long the video will play for and we will just let play this out to show you what happens at the end And as you can see, the video will end with a freeze frame. If you press F11, it will clear everything on the video layer. So not the channel, but the video layer. What you mostly want to do is make a package of uh, different commercials, for instance. So what we're going to do is uh, make a playlist of some kind. So we select what we want in the playlist, make it a group, and we can call this add package uh, number one. 
and when we press auto play it will play it in the sequence that it's in the group so if we now select the package and press f2 it will play the two videos uh, after each other a couple of things to note for videos uh, playing it out uh, make sure that the videos in the media folder are the rendered in the correct uh, frame rate um, because if you have a different frame rate it will speed up or will slow down depending how you rendered it and make sure that there's no clipping in the audio so let's speed this up a bit And here it will also freeze frame at the end. So I press F11 again uh, at the end to make it clear the video layer. All right, I just downloaded a logo of DreamHack. I'm gonna also put it in the media folder. As you can see, there's nothing in images. So I uh, make sure to refresh the library. And what we wanna do with the logo, we wanna have it on top of the videos so we can uh, have it as a let's say a channel logo or something so what we're going to do we're going to drop it in we're going to select it and what we want to do is we want to have it on top of the video so it needs to be a layer on top of it so let's press f2 well this logo is of course too big so what we're going to want to do is transform the video layer uh, and within the tools you can find transform you have to select the server for this one because it won't auto select it and of course we need to set the right layer so that it only changes the logo and not the videos underneath here you can find the different sliders and how you can transform or make a different size and let's say i just want to have one tenth of the size so now it's on top and with the position you can change the position within the output of Cosmos CG. I think somewhere here is pretty fine. So if we play out the packages, the add package that's on video layer 10, the logo will show on top of it. Of course make sure that it's a transparent PNG, otherwise it will show everything that's in the image. And let's stop this one. And stop this one as well. F11. If you want to clear everything on Casper CG, press F12 because it will clear the channel. And here in the tools you have different things you want to change. So you can also change the volume of the video layer. Uh, but this is something you can play around with if you uh, if you want to know more about the different tools. So now let's. Uh, get into the templates. Uh, first we're gonna stop the server that we use for VT. I only put in Q and press enter and it will stop the server. As you can see in the client it uh, shows disconnected. That means it can't connect with the server that is set for playing out the media. So next up we're gonna configure the uh, server for overlays. We're just gonna copy the overlay uh, the VT settings because it's going to use the same settings and because it's local it will still recognize as the uh, server that's connected to the client so here we're going to resize it again just to make it workable and Let's minimize this server. Uh, all right. So next up is we're gonna do some templates. So here are the different templates I made beforehand. So 
So let's start with something simple, just a nameplate. And if we press F2, it will play out. If I press F1, it will do the out animation. So if you look at the output, you can see that you can set the same settings as uh, we could do with the video. So you can select a different server uh, where it needs to play out. Uh, it's quite handy because we normally use one machine for overlays and one for the VT. So we want to add text. In this template, I already know that the variables are name. So I put in my name and I know the second line of text has the variable Twitter. So for the key, I fill in Twitter and here I fill in my Twitter handle. Okay, let's make sure that I fill it in wrong so I can show you how you can correct that mistake. So if I press F1, you see that it plays out the nameplate, uh, but of course it's not my Twitter handle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change the text and press F6 and then it updates without playing out the animations. So let's press F1 again to stop the animation. Uh, so this is a different one I made. It's a uh, countdown lower third and here I will put in some variables as well. So I know the first line of text is going to be line one. And the second is line two. And then we have a third that's a bit different. It's the countdown. Um, you can make a countdown in a template and how this countdown in this specific template works is that we want to set the minutes. So if we now play it out, you see that it counts down from 20 minutes. Uh, but it's eSports, so there are going to be some technical difficulties. So we want to update the countdown. It's basically the same as with the we Twitter handle. And I'm going to change this to 50 minutes and press F6 to update the countdown to 50 minutes. And let's press F2 to stop it. The same we did with the logo, we can do a different layering of templates. So let's uh, do a League of Legends um, in-game screen and we're gonna put in the variables team right. Team left. And there's also a title. Then let's play that out on layer 20. And this will be a overlay um, for League of Legends. So if we wanna have the countdown on top of that, because I don't know, uh, you can just play it out on the same layer because it will stop the other layer that is also on, this, on layer 20 in this case. So if you play it out on layer 21, it will play over the in-game uh, League of Legends overlay. And if we first stop it, of course, and play it on 19, it will play under the overlay for in-game. So now we have shown what you can do. Uh, you can prepare your whole show. So uh, for instance, this nameplate is only gonna be used during a Rocket League segment. I'm just gonna name the group Rocket League segment and I'm gonna change the label of this one a nameplate Geert Verhoef. And so you can just add the same template over and over again with different uh, variables um, make it easy for you to see which nameplate it is and um, build your show as a rundown. 
And that are the basics for the Casper CG client and how to handle it. Now you can test it yourself at home. If you want to create templates, I have a separate tutorial on to create flash templates and I will be working on a tutorial to create uh, HTML templates.